we're in the Cirrus at a stratospheric 17,000 feet coming back over the Cascades en route to Bellingham Airport. Our route is taking us to the Payne VOR and then on to Bellingham. We're about 15 miles from the Payne VOR when ATC gives us this instruction. Descend via the Matty 4 arrival, Bellingham's landing north. The instruction to descend via means we'll want to comply with all the speed and altitude restrictions on the procedure. And there's quite a few. We can program these restrictions into the G1000, this version being the G1000 NXI, and then actually have the autopilot fly them using the vertical navigation function. Vertical navigation will plot a descent rate in feet per minute so that we arrive at an altitude at a specified point and we can use it for arrivals, approaches, or even VFR for descent planning to our destination pattern altitude. We'll work off the MFD on the right here. First, let's load the arrival. We'll hit PROC and using the FMS knob, move down to select arrival and hit enter. Because we already had Bellingham as our destination, the one arrival for that airport, the MADI-4, is shown. We can select the runway that applies. ATC told us Bellingham is landing north, so we'll choose runway 34 and hit enter. We can choose the Payne transition or go direct to MADI. Our flight plan has us going to Payne already, and we weren't told any different by ATC, so we'll use that transition, scrolling down and hitting enter. We'll scroll down to load and hit enter. Now on the flight plan page, all of the points on the star are listed. And on the right column, each of the altitude restrictions are shown as well. Starting with Payne at 16,000 feet down to Tub T at 3,500 feet. Below that is an active VNV profile. It shows our first waypoint, the Payne VOR and the restriction 16,000 feet. The system has calculated a vertical speed target, that's the VSTGT of the first column, showing about a 725 foot per minute descent. This uses the standard descent angle of three degrees. Given that we're currently at 17,000 feet, it's also calculated the appropriate point to start this descent, which is called our top of descent, or TOD. And the timer in the top right is showing we're about five minutes away from that point. Now, if we hit the FPL button, it hides the flight plan page, and we can see that the top of descent point TOD has been indicated along our route of flight prior to the pain VOR. If we move over to the PFD on the left, the first altitude restriction of the arrival, 16,000 feet at pain, is listed in pink in the top right. It's next to our bugged altitude of 17,000 feet, which is what the autopilot is currently flying as is shown on top of the display on the autopilot status bar in green with ALT and 17,000 feet. Now, this is an important step if we want to use the autopilot for these altitude restrictions. Using vertical nav for the descent, the autopilot will stop at the higher of these two altitudes, which right now is 17,000 feet. So we want to change that. We'll go to our autopilot setup and using the altitude select knobs at the bottom, decrease this to the bottom restrictions of the arrival, which is 3,500 at Tubti. With that descend via instruction from ATC, this is the lowest altitude we've been cleared down to, so that's what we'll program in. So make sure your armed altitudes aren't conflicting in this way. It's part of the clean cockpit principle. With that taken care of, we can arm vertical navigation by hitting the VNV button. By doing that, the letters VPTH appear on the autopilot status bar in turquoise. This means we've armed vertical path tracking mode. We're still in altitude hold mode at 17,000 feet, as indicated by ALT in green, but our descent will start at that program TOD point. As we approach the TOD point, we see some new indications on the PFD. There's now a vertical deviation indicator, this bar to the left of the altitude with a pink V at the top. We can almost think of this like a glide path for our program descent to 16,000 feet. This carrot above center here is showing that that path is above us still as we approach top of descent. There's also a bug for our required vertical speed to the right of the altitude. This is showing around 500 feet per minute, which matches up with the required vertical speed shown on the flight path screen over on the MFD. If we started our descent now, 
we'd need this roughly 500 feet per minute rate to hit 16,000 by pain. But we're not starting it quite yet. We're doing it at that program top at descent point to give us a standard three degree angle, which is why our target is still that around 730 feet per minute figure. As we get closer to our top of descent, that pink carrot will move down closer to that figure. When we start our descent, the autopilot will maneuver us to place the black vertical speed bar on that pink carrot. Have a look at the autopilot status bar on top of the PFD as we approach top of descent. It's activated vertical path tracking mode as shown by the blinking VPTH. The autopilot will pitch us down to our required vertical speed on that pink carrot to the right of the altitude, which is now around 750 feet per minute. We can now reduce our power for the descent by pulling back the throttle. Also notice that now the vertical deviation indicator to the left of the altitude shows the bug right in the center. It should stay there throughout the descent. When we get to pain, we'll just be approaching our 16,000 foot restriction. The autopilot will turn us on track to the next fix on the arrival, Everett, and adjust the descent rate to target arriving at Everett just at 14,000 feet, the next restriction. All we have to do is manage the throttle for the descent. So we arrive at Everett at 14,000 feet and continue down on the star towards Matty at 7,000. Let's have a look outside. We'll likely need an instrument approach into Bellingham with this cloud cover. As we pass Matty, that is indeed what ATC instructs us by telling us to expect the RNAV 3-4 Yankee approach. We can load that up and use Iwani as the initial approach fix. Notice on the flight plan there's a bottom of descent point, BOD plan for us, just prior to reaching belt at 4,000. Our final altitude on the arrival is 3,500 at Tub T, but we can level off momentarily at 4 before dropping down again, so we'll plan to increase the cruise power at that BOD point. After doing that and passing belt, notice a new top of descent point indicated prior to reaching Tub T for that small 500 foot drop we'll need to 3,500. The autopilot status has also changed. We're in altitude hold mode again with ALT in green and the vertical path tracking mode is armed as indicated by VPTH and turquoise. It'll activate when we hit the top of descent. At this point though, let's say we're told to proceed direct tub T and are cleared for the RNAV approach. This means we can cross tub T at 3000, not 3500. So we'll activate the approach by scrolling down using the FMS knob to tub T. Make sure it's the tub T on the approach, not on the arrival, and hit direct, enter, enter. Watch what happens to the TOD. It moves up closer to our position because we need to drop not just to 3,500, but now down to 3,000. And our target rate of descent is now over 1,300 feet per minute. Once again, we'll go into vertical path mode on the autopilot and start the descent. We'll want to set our altitude bug now to 2,200 feet which is where we'll be at when we cross the final approach fix, a Hato. We'll also want to arm the approach by hitting the APR button. When we cross the final approach fix then, the autopilot will pick up the glide path, notice the GP now in green on the status bar, and fly us down to the runway. Now here's your moment of zen as we break out of the clouds at minimums and spot runway 34 at Bellingham. A smooth descent from close to this aircraft service ceiling down to the runway, managed beautifully using vertical navigation on the G1000. One more thing, here's a simple use of the vertical nav function. We'll need to use the Garmin PC sim for this one. If we're on a VFR flight approaching an airport in Kansas, Kilo 81 from the north at 6,500 feet, we can program a descent to reach pattern altitude and have the system calculate a top of descent for us. We'll hit the D button for direct, and it pulls up our destination, Kilo 81. But we could just as easily use any airport. We'll use the FMS knob to scroll down to the altitude field. We can set the pattern altitude, which since the field elevation is 943 feet, 
we'll say is 1900 feet. When we hit enter, we see that we get the option to set this in MSL as we'll do, or we could set AGL and just use 1000 feet. We'll move over to the offset. It's a good idea to reach pattern altitude prior to arriving at the field, so we'll make the offset negative three miles and we'll hit enter. Notice we get the familiar pink indications on the right side of the PFD. Let's have a look at the MFD though and see that the system has calculated our top of descent point right in front of us. We can adjust this by moving to the FPA field and changing the descent angle. Notice as we increase the descent angle, the TOD point pushes further out away from us and vice versa. We'll settle on a three and a half degree angle, which gives us about a 680 foot per minute descent and puts our top of descent about a minute and a half out. Back on the PFD, we'll set up the autopilot the same way we did back in Washington. We'll first change our bugged altitude to the pattern altitude we want to descend to, 1900 feet. Remember, the autopilot won't go below the higher of the bugged altitude or the VNV altitude. We'll then hit the VNV button. Notice vertical path tracking mode, VPTH, is now armed since it's in turquoise. And now all we have to do is wait until we get to TOD. When that happens, VPTH goes active in green, the autopilot pitches us down, and we can reduce power for the descent. Notice as we establish in the descent that the vertical speed on the black arrow matches right up with the pink carrot indicating the required vertical speed and we can hold that all the way down through the descent to pattern altitude. As we approach 1900 feet, the autopilot goes into altitude capture mode and we level off at pattern altitude three miles out from the field as advertised, giving us room to maneuver for a downwind entry to the pattern. Did you like this video? You're gonna love Flight Insight IFR Ground School. Hours and hours of videos just like this as well as hundreds of practice test questions based on the real thing with instructor feedback. Head on over to flight-insight.com slash IFR right now.